So as a progressive who operates online, I've realized there's a lot of information that we think everyone's aware of, when in actuality, your regular Joe, who isn't always on Twitter, actually isn't. What I've seen in particular when it comes to trans people and the conversations surrounding them is we as people on the left online just get used to fighting the people who are hateful and just skip right to arguing with their points and pointing out that they have hateful views without stopping to explain the foundational stuff that really helps you come to the views that we have. And so we leave people in that kind of in-between space where they're not super hateful, but they also don't understand enough to have the views that we have. And so for example, I've seen in my personal life when it comes to the the topic of trans people. There's so many people who want to be supportive, but honestly have a lot of gaps in their knowledge about the subject that hinders their ability to be their best and be as supportive as possible. I'm telling you, I have lots of people who are amazing in every aspect of life and really want to be supportive. But then you talk about this issue and they're kind of like, wait, a man can be a woman. Wait, I don't understand. And all it's taken for me is just to explain a few fundamental things and then they're on board. So I think it's super important that we as progressives give people a chance to learn before we wave them off as transphobic. So with that being said, because my show usually covers stories that are relevant in the news, I don't wanna have to wait until a story comes up about trans issues for me to get into all of this. So instead, I've decided to dedicate today's video to going through a bunch of information that you should be educated on so that you can understand as well as effectively support trans people. So if you feel like you barely understand a lot of aspects of this subject, or even if you find yourself agreeing with a lot of the conservative talking points about transgender people, then this video is going to be perfect perfect for you and I beg you to watch the whole thing. But even if you're super knowledgeable and already an advocate for trans rights, I very much encourage you to still watch this because I've done a lot of research and found really good studies and information that will help you not only have the correct views, but also have the tools to back them up and possibly be able to move some of your family and friends into being on the correct side of this and hopefully even being an advocate themselves. The last thing I'll say before we jump in, I wanted to put this all in one video so that there would be a resource for myself as well as my family and friends, but then also you, to anytime you feel like you're having a discussion with somebody and their views are informed by ignorance, then hopefully this video will serve as the perfect thing you can send to them and say, hey, learn the basics first because clearly you're uneducated on the subject and then we can discuss. There's a lot to cover, so I'm going to try to make this as logically structured and broken down as possible. And I'll say up front, I can't possibly cover everything in this video, but I'm gonna try to hit on the major points. So here's how we'll lay this out. First, we'll go through the difference between gender and biological sex because you have to understand that. Then we'll discuss gender dysphoria, then hormone therapy and sex reassignment surgery, then puberty blockers, and finally why it's our responsibility and we should be passionate about supporting. And of course, all throughout it, I'll be addressing conservative arguments that I hear a lot. Okay, gender versus sex. So when you're born, your sex, male or female or intersex, can be identified because it is biological. We've all learned this in high school science, but you either have XY chromosomes, XX chromosomes, and those determine if you're male or female. That's kind of the common conception, but actually in the dictionary, it defines male and female as relating to purely the reproduction. So it says that males are defined as that if they produce sperm and female if they produce eggs. But of course, there's exceptions to all of this. So as I mentioned at the beginning, intersex people are born with reproductive or sexual anatomy that doesn't fit the boxes of female or male. So there's some people who are born with the genitals of both males and females, but we'll try not to jump around too much. So for most people, you're born as a male at birth or a female. I think everyone's familiar with this and it's pretty easy to understand. Okay, so if that's biological, then why is it that we call people a man and a woman and we don't just refer to everyone as, hey, that male, that female? Well, that's where the social construct comes in. So humans, as with everything linguistic, came up with a concept that would be associated with sex called gender. So sex equals male, female, intersex. Gender equals man, woman, non-binary. So gender represents the characteristics that we assign to being male or female. And I know some of you are already going, I don't know about that. Just wait, I can prove to you that you agree with me. A lot of times conservatives say gender is science. You're born a man or a woman. That's just biology. Really? When was the last time that a doctor pulled a baby out of a woman and went, Oh, look at this man. Or when was the last time you heard someone call their eight-year-old daughter a woman? If we were standing in a room together right now and you went, oh, look at that woman, and there was a eight-year-old female child standing over there, I would be like, surely not. Okay, is there, who are we talking about? And I know you're already answering this in your head, but why is that? It's because we call younger females typically girls. Okay, so we have boy, girl, man, woman. Boy and girl refer to younger females. If it's scientific and biological, you would be able to tell me exactly when a boy becomes a man. 
<laughs> that sounds like a movie title. A boy becomes a man. Okay, so when does that shift happen? Because we would be able to tell if it was biological. And I know what you're thinking. 18 years old, it's when they become an adult. Okay, well, not too long ago in the grand scheme of things, girls were considered to become women much younger. They would get married. A lot of times they would have kids before they were even 18 in the old days. You remember this from history class, right? And people still get married under the age of 18 right now. And that means let's say they're saying their vow and the person says a union between a man and a woman and a 16 year old standing there, which is terrible that that happens, but it does. So in that space, that person is considered a woman, but in lots of other spaces, you would see a 16 year old and be like, that's a girl. And plus, whenever a 40 year old man introduces their 40 year old female partner, they don't say this is my woman friend. They say this is my girlfriend. But again, no one would ever say, yeah, my little six year old is a great woman. And the reason you can never clearly define to me when it's appropriate to use girl or woman or man or boy is because they're just terms that we came up with to kind of help assign identities to certain people. And so the words man and woman are just ones that we use to describe identities that tend to associate with masculinity or femininity. Another quick great example of this is the term tomboy. Growing up, girls who would roughhouse and didn't dress feminine would be called tomboys. Why? Because they had characteristics that we as a society assigned to being a boy. They weren't biologically a boy because they weren't biologically either. They just exemplified the attributes that we have decided to label as being a boy. Okay, so I hope we're on the same page. Sex can be determined biologically. Gender is the characteristics that we've said, hey, these usually associate with those sexes. And so we'll call those characteristics gender, but they don't always align with sex. And there's broad scientific consensus on this. Seek out any credible medical source and they'll outline to you that sex, male, female, intersex is biological, whereas gender is not. Just one more time, gender is used to describe the characteristics of a woman and man that are socially constructed, socially constructed, while sex refers to those that are biologically determined. People are born female or male. People learn to be girls and boys who grow into women and men. So if gender isn't biological, then what determines it? This is a complete discussion about identity. I personally think it'd be great if we could get to a place as a society eventually where we don't need so many tiles to describe masculine people and feminine people. People can just be people. But for now, this is what we got and it's really good to understand. Okay, so you have to understand this for us to move forward. Sex, biological, gender, a matter of identity. And I'm telling you, you can talk to any expert and they'll tell you exactly what I'm saying. Now, because as a society, we've meshed these two concepts so much, even trans people a lot of times will refer to themselves as male if they identify as a man, especially if they've had sex reassignment surgery, then for all relevant reasons, you can just go ahead and call yourself the sex that aligns with the one that you're presenting as. And this is a huge piece of misinformation that the conservatives put out. They try to pretend like trans men, for example, are walking around going, oh no, I wasn't born biologically female. Nope, 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 nope. Absolutely not. You talk to any trans person, they're not trying to deny that they were born one biological sex. They've just decided to identify as different gender than they were assigned at birth and possibly get surgery so that the physical elements of their sex align with their gender. And I don't blame people for mixing up these terms because even on official forms that you have to fill out, they'll put what is your gender and then the two options are male or female, which just that doesn't make any sense. That doesn't go together. But like I said, all of the medical and scientific experts are in consensus on this because it's the facts. Okay, I hope that's clear. Check. Now let's move on to gender dysphoria. So I've heard people when talking about trans people go, oh, it's probably just a phase or they just are a feminine man they don't need to be a woman no okay let's quickly define gender dysphoria a concept designated in the dsm-5 as clinically significant distress or impairment related to a strong desire to be of another gender which may include desire to change primary and or secondary sex characteristics not all transgender or gender diverse people experience dysphoria so the psychiatric community has established a clinically significant amount of distress that happens when the sex that you're born as and thus the gender that you're assigned by society don't align with the one you identify as. So like that quote mentioned, not all trans people experience gender dysphoria, but a lot do. And it's an important topic to discuss that leads us to the conversation of the usage of puberty blockers, hormone therapy, and sex reassignment surgery, and why those things should be supported. So gender dysphoria is medically diagnosable and there's clear treatment for it. 
psychiatrists have identified treatment for this hormone therapy such as feminizing hormone therapy or masculinizing hormone therapy surgery such as feminizing surgery or masculinizing surgery to change the breasts or chest external genitalia internal genitalia facial features and body contouring and the quote i just read comes from the mayo clinic website so this isn't some live idea blah, 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 blah. no this is medical experts so because so much about the way that you're treated and the gender that you're perceived as is so closely tied with your sex for example the deepness of your voice broadness of your shoulders whether or not you have breasts if you have a penis or vagina etc and as i mentioned there's people with all combinations of that that we call intersex but it can be so difficult and this is gender dysphoria when your sex doesn't align with the gender that you identify as that's such a brutal experience so there's a few tools that we can use to address this i'll start with the biggest kind of most obvious one sex reassignment surgery to discuss this let's take a hypothetical woman who was born a male but identifies as a woman they can go in and get a surgery where they change their physical appearance in such a way that aligns better with their identity so of course you can get breasts you can change your face you can change your genitalia now boom the rest of the world is going to see a female like figure and thus treat you and see you as a woman and also for this woman when they look in the mirror they're going to get to see a physical appearance that matches more with their gender identity even though you don't have to look feminine to identify as a woman and you don't have to look masculine to identify as a man but if you want to this surgery can absolutely do that so to be clear if someone identifies as a woman they are a woman but then a lot of times to be treated and feel comfortable as one it takes changing your physical characteristics that your sex cause you to have so another tool available to trans individuals is hormone therapy and that is where you take medication that causes your body to act more in the way that aligns with your gender because i can tell you a lot of times the mind and the body aren't in sync with each other like this is a dumb analogy but just bear with me when i was in middle school i thought of myself like in my own head i was muscular but then i would look in the mirror and be like oh my gosh you're so skinny now my solution for that i changed my own physical appearance by eating more and working out and some people i didn't do this but take testosterone supplements and in a much more significant sense the solution for people with gender dysphoria can be hormone therapy that can help your physical appearance align better with your mind it's really pretty simple you pretty much just get artificially supplied the hormones that the sex you're trying to present as naturally produce so the biggest response i hear especially from conservatives but even from other people as well when the conversation of sex reassignment surgery and hormone therapy is brought up is don't do it to the kids don't do it to the kids oh what about the kids and on that i'm definitely okay with waiting until a person is an adult to have any of these surgeries and so wait until you're 18 and you can give consent as an individual that makes total sense to me i've heard some edge cases where there was a lot of risk if they didn't do it earlier but for the most part wait until people are 18 to have these surgeries that's totally fine so if that's only happening 18 and beyond what discussions are to be had about before that Let's look at this real quick. The study findings revealed that 73% of the transgender women and 78% of the transgender men first experienced gender dysphoria by age seven. So the vast, vast majority of these people experience gender dysphoria by age seven. So a lot of the misinformation you're going to hear about kids being transgender from conservatives is going to be sparked from the conversation around puberty blockers. That's really the only treatment that is being encouraged and is being given to kids. So for example, if you had a male child who was seven years old and they started experiencing gender dysphoria, first you would have extensive medical consultations where they'd actually diagnose it. So this isn't some mom going, oh, I think my kid's trans, I'm gonna give them this. No, this is medical experts taking a look at a child and then diagnosing if they have gender dysphoria. And then at some point, Point before the kid starts puberty they would be prescribed puberty blockers so what that would do for this male child is the characteristics that develop during puberty would be prevented from developing so then whenever you're old enough to make a decision for yourself if you want to have a surgery if you want to do other hormone therapy so that you present a certain way it's gonna be worlds easier because you wouldn't have already gone through the puberty that doesn't align with your gender identity so for example this male child who identifies as a woman then they won't have to get the deep voice and the broad shoulders and all that type of stuff and they're likely to be much much happier with their physical appearance but wait the kids uh it's completely reversible it's completely 
reversible. If you decide to stop taking them, your body will go through puberty just the way it would have if you had not taken puberty blockers at all. So if at a young age, a child identifies as a different gender than the one they were assigned and you give them puberty blockers so that they don't have to go through the puberty that would go with a sex that they don't at that present moment identify with. And then later on, for some reason, they're, ah, never mind, I actually do want to go through male puberty. And I was just whatever mixed up. I don't actually identify as a woman. I do identify as a man and want to go through male puberty. Then boom, you just stop taking the puberty blockers and all available evidence shows you'll just go through puberty exactly how you would have and catch right back up to where you would have been. So it really is the perfect treatment for kids because if you have a trans child, you're gonna put them through so much mental anguish if you force them to go through puberty for their biological sex for no reason because you could just prevent their puberty until they make up their mind and then they're an adult, they didn't have to go through that puberty, they feel much better or they change their mind, stop taking puberty blockers and go through puberty exactly how they would have and they'll catch right back up. So that's all progressives are advocating for. Don't believe anybody who's lying to you telling you that, oh, the left wants to have kids transitioning at nine years old with big surgeries. They just don't understand this. And so, so many people are being manipulated into hating people and being all against transgenderism for no reason. Hey everyone, it's Luke jumping in and recording this after I got done shooting the video because while I was editing, a really important point came to my mind that I wanted to include. So I'm about to lay out in the video what I think is a convincing argument for why even the coldest hearted person should be supportive. The point that I feel like I missed and why I'm recording this is the quick answer to why you should support them is simply because. We should support trans people and their rights to do what they'd like simply because we're decent human beings who should respect others' wishes and should want people to be who they are, right? That makes sense. So everything I'm about to say are not the only reasons you should be supportive because human kindness could allow you to do that but instead there are some of the most extreme reasons you should be supportive. And I wanted to structure it this way so even someone who is severely biased against trans acceptance could be swayed. And I'll talk a lot about how support lowers suicide rates, which is amazing, but by no means should that be our only reason and only goal behind pushing for trans rights. Okay, back to it. So the final topic and very importantly, why should you be supportive of a number of aspects of this? So we'll go through this in kind of a bullet point form as well. First, I'll just go over broadly why you should support trans people and why you should support them getting to identify as who they are. Second, why you should support and use people's proper pronouns. Third, why you should support trans people getting puberty blockers if they want them. And fourth, why you should support people choosing to get sex reassignment surgery. Something that is discussed extensively when it comes to trans people is the staggeringly high high suicide rate. 41% of respondents reported attempting suicide compared to 1.6% of the general population. Guys, that is unbelievable. 41% of trans people have attempted to commit suicide compared to 2% of the general population. And sometimes probably the dumbest argument I hear from conservatives is, see, that's why we shouldn't support people being trans. It's actually the exact opposite. It proves the opposite point. Let me show you. LGBTQ youth whose families affirm their identity and sexual orientation are almost 50%, 50% less likely to make a suicide attempt compared to those whose families are unsupportive. And then for specifically trans people, a study was done that looked at the amount of transphobia an individual experienced, and it found that if they were in the category of the study that experienced the least transphobia, there was a 76% reduction in attempts among those with ideation. 76% reduction in suicide attempts. That is amazing. If we treat people kindly and we don't allow society to be transphobic, we're literally saving lives. And that's just the suicide rates. But of course, general well-being is much, much better and happiness levels go up, depression goes down if trans individuals have people around them who are supportive. Okay, on to the next subject of this why you should support segment. Here's why you should use the pronouns that people identify as. And of course, by pronouns, we mean he, him, she, her, and then for our non-binary individuals, they, them. I think everyone should be convinced by this point in the video because if you understand that gender is a matter of identity as we established, then naturally you would just use whatever pronouns someone identifies with. But to add to it, transgender and non-binary youth who report having their pronouns respected by all or most of the people in their lives attempted suicide at half the rate of those who did not have their pronouns respected. Guys, is anything this easy in the world? All we have to do as a society is go, oh, <laughs> you want to be called he, him? You want to be called she, her? You want to call they, them? Dope. I'll call you that. And boom, 
50% drop in suicide attempts among this group. Why wouldn't we do that? Not to mention, it's not that we're doing it and it's kind of wrong. We're doing it and it is correct because like I've said many times, gender is a matter of identity. So you might as well call someone whatever they want to be called. And by the way, every trans individual that I've spoken to about this has said they totally understand. Like for example, if they recently transitioned and are now asking you to call them a certain set of pronouns and you're messing up because you're used to using the other one, they understand. You don't have to be uptight or terrified about this. If they see that you're doing your best to respect them, then absolutely. It's the people who know you want to be called something else and they're purposefully using the wrong pronouns. That's what's hurtful. But if you make your best effort and they see that you're doing that, that's absolutely what is needed. Additionally, when else would we do this with something like people literally go nope i'm not gonna call you that you want to be called she well i'm gonna call you he because you were born as a biological male well think about it let's say on your birth certificate it says jonathan but you like going by john you really hate the sound of jonathan and so you ask all your friends to call you john how much of a jerk would I be if every time I saw you, I was like, hi, Jonathan, hi, Jonathan, haha, <laughs> Jonathan, I know you want me to call you John, and it wouldn't harm me at all to do it, but on your birth certificate, it says Jonathan, so I have to call you Jonathan, or it would be fundamentally not correct. Yeah, you would come off as a jerk and it's the exact same thing with pronouns. So bottom line with pronouns, do your best and we can improve so many people's well-being. Third, why you should support puberty blockers for kids who are trans and want them. Transgender individuals who receive puberty blockers during adolescence have a lower risk of suicidal thoughts as adults than those who wanted the medication but could not access them according to the study published Thursday in the journal Pediatrics. And don't forget, it's completely reversible. So you're doing something for your child that when they grow up to be an adult, they're more likely to be happy. But as I've said many times, if they regret it for some reason, they can just stop taking the puberty blockers and they'll go through puberty like they would have without them. So that's so clear if a child is diagnosed with gender dysphoria and you can supply them with this thing that is very likely to make them happier when they're an adult, why not? And finally, why should we support people transitioning with sex reassignment surgeries? And you won't be surprised a study was done and it found that transgender people who had received one or more gender affirming surgical procedures had a 42% reduction in the odds of experiencing past month psychological distress. So they were less likely to have experienced psychological distress in the last month, a 35% reduction in the odds of past year tobacco smoking, and a 44% reduction in the odds of past year suicidal ideation. So by supporting people's right to have these surgeries change their physical appearance so it aligns better with their identity, we're literally improving their quality of life and decreasing their likelihood to harm themselves in any way. So in the description box below, I'm going to link one or two videos of trans people just telling their story because I gave you all all the stats and gave you all the logical arguments but i also just want you to see the beautiful humans that we're talking about with this my mom always brings up the point that having all the logical explanations and the stats and the evidence on your sides important but as far as impacting most people's hearts and minds you have to show a story and so because on this issue i'm not speaking from any experience i want you all to see people who can tell their own story and so i think that'll be really impactful to add on to all the information that i just gave you like I mentioned, that will be in the description box below. So if after all this, you're not a staunch supporter of trans rights, I don't know what to say. We established there's nothing scientifically off about this. It's 100% a matter of identity. We walked through all the different tools to help align their physical being with their inner being. And we walked through all the reasons why every single one of us should absolutely be supportive of trans people, of those treatments and of their rights. Here's what else you need to know today. President Biden says he is quote, convinced Putin has decided to invade. Trump was confirmed by the National Archives to have taken classified documents with him to Mar-a-Lago when he left office. Oh, Trump, you can't do that. Kim Potter, who shot Dante Wright because she said that she pulled her gun instead of her taser, was sentenced to two years in prison, which is just not long at all. And finally, tensions are rising in Canada with protesters assaulting police who are attempting to clear them out. Be well, everybody.